So before I start, I want to, uh, I want to read two scriptures. In Revelation 12, verse 11, it says, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to shrink from death. And so as I share my testimony, I pray that I can speak it boldly. I pray that, God, you would speak to me so that somebody out here today, that freedom is about to break out, God, that that guilt, shame, and condemnation will no longer rule in the heart of men. Right now, God, you are raising up an army of warriors. And, God, I pray that as I speak into the heart of these warriors today, Lord, that you would give me words to encourage, to inspire, to activate men today, God, that I would, that Jeff would not be here and that your Holy Spirit would fill me, Lord, so that your power would ride through me, God. And I just yield to your spirit this morning. And so as I was walking in this morning, every, every time I have an opportunity to share my testimony, I pray to affect one man. And this morning as I was walking in, I met Michael, and I think he's the man that I'm here to speak to. So as I share my testimony, this is for you, Michael, because like you, I was held captive by drugs, alcohol, pornography. I was a slave to sin. And so my testimony is simple. It was an identity theft at a young age. And so my calling is Isaiah 61. So I'm going to read a little bit of Isaiah 61 before I get into the specifics of my testimony. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news and tidings to the poor. He sent me, Jeff or Senego, to heal the broken, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prisons to those who are in bondage to proclaim acceptable year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance to our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that those may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And so as I share my story, it's really not my story. It's a story of rescue. And so I'm going to start at the bottom. So two and a half years ago, after two failed marriages, I'm in a five-bedroom house, and for the first time in my life, I had thoughts of suicide. How does a guy end up at 46, two failed marriages, a history of drug and alcohol abuse, and, and the thought of suicide is an actual viable option. Well, I'll tell you how. When I was in fifth grade, my mother called me a worthless piece of S-H-I-T. And I believed it. I made a false agreement to a false narrative, and I lived it out. I became that false identity. And so from that point, every decision I made was rooted in death that was spoken over me. In Proverbs 18.21 It says life and death are in the power of the tongue. And that's why it's so important that the words we speak to ourselves and the words we speak to those in our lives speak life. Because death spoken to a child can manifest 30 some years later to that level of desperation. And it was in that moment where I seriously had thoughts of suicide with a nine millimeter next to my bed, I heard an audible voice said, you're worth fighting for. It's the first time I ever had a Holy Spirit God speaking to me experience. So I know it wasn't me. The next morning, I went out and bought the URL, Battle Worth Fighting. And literally, I had an experience that night in a five-bedroom home with no kids, three months after a second failed marriage. And I, I physically felt God come down and rescue me, grab me by the chest, put his arm around me, and say, Jeff, I'm pulling you out of this burning building of death that was spoken over so that one day you can go back and rescue other men. And so this morning, Michael, we're fighting on your behalf. We're going to speak life and truth into you. And so my life really began at 46. I'm now 49. 
And so what does my life look like since then? Well, I'll tell you. Part of my healing journey was being willing to own my story. And so trauma from childhood, divorce, drug and alcohol, uh, infidelity on my father's side, mental health issues on my mother's side. Because I grew up in a house where we didn't talk about anything. Everything was swept under the rug, and we lived in Pink Elephantville. And so there's no freedom when, when children see the truth, but we keep up a great appearance. And we were great as a family in keeping up appearances. And I believe God chose me to shatter those, those false agreements. So my father died 23 years ago, and my mother died last year. And so this last three years, what I've done is I've done a deep dive and an excavation to rescue the little boy that was traumatized as a child. And so part of that journey for me is going through a celebrate recovery and being willing to face and untangle all the lies the enemy meant. If I told you that I stuttered as a child, would you believe me? If I told you that I was a 2.0 student that could not retain any information, would you believe me? And that's the enemy's lie that had, had had captive on me. I don't stutter anymore. And so as a man walking in Christ, God has freed me because I didn't have a learning disability. I grew up in trauma and was just trying to survive. And so when God healed that part of me, all these other parts of me started to emerge. And so I believe that the enemy will typically attack a man in adolescence through abuse, through molestation, through an attack from a close confidant, from death spoken over us through a parent or, a, or, a, or a, a close person. And so where I go, I feel like God uses me as, a, as an example to, to take back territory that the enemy meant for evil. And so in that scripture, there's going to be an exchange for beauty to ashes. And so out of my, my terrible story can bring ex- encouragement and hope to other men. So part of my journey is when I bought the URL Battle Worth Fighting, I felt God tell me that the way to freedom is by men owning their stories. Because when we don't own our stories and we hide in guilt, shame, and condemnation, the enemy still has power over us. And what God wants is freedom. And when you own your story, no matter how ugly or filthy it is, you can walk in freedom. Nobody's going to come to you and say, hey, have you heard what Jeff did? Be like, yeah, it's all over the internet, and he spoke publicly about it. And so for me, I try and go and 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 be an example of by revealing my failures and my faults, because in doing so, God's power, you can see God in that. If I came and told you how great I was, my audience would be very small. But when I lead from a posture of brokenness, from a posture of humility, from a posture of leading with a limp, I find that my platform expands a lot broader than, than successes. And so for me, that journey was capturing story. And so two and a half years ago, I started filming not only myself, but men sharing their stories. Because if a younger version of me had a library of men that have been through real life stuff, suicide, pornography addiction, infidelity, drug and alcohol abuse, suicide, you, you fill in the blank. Everybody in here has a struggle. Now, are we willing to own it and are we willing to expose it? Where I've found true freedom is exposure. When we bring light into dark places, the enemy has no power and true freedom can break out. And so what does the enemy want? He wants us to hide. He loves nothing more than for a man to walk alone to feel isolated as though you're the only one. You're not. And so part of this library of content is to offer encouragement to other men to say, wow, I'm not the only guy that struggled with this. And so 40-some interviews later, that's how Joel and I met on, you know, going to prayer meeting. And I, I said, hey, Joel, I love your heart. I love your heart for worship. Would you be willing to share your testimony on our platform, Battle Worth Fighting? And he agreed. And then he said, hey, will you come to my Wednesday Warrior group? And I said, I agree. I will go wherever an invitation is, is presented. My, 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 the way that I hid, my hiding places were behind women, drugs, 
and my success. And most men will go through life wearing a mask. I did. And that's not freedom. So my worth was how many tackles I made, how many women I had sex with, and how much money I made. And I excelled in all three of those until my life collapsed. After a second failed marriage, my second wife and I had a daughter. I have two older sons and a daughter. And I believe that my daughter, Olivia Grace, was a gift of God's grace to me. Because for the first time, I had to face a woman and realize all the pain and trauma that I had caused many women. And now these women were somebody's daughter. And so for me, God used a five-year-old daughter to stop me in my tracks and get me to take full ownership for all the damage I had done since age 15. I was introduced to pornography in fifth grade. That's a whole nother testimony. And so God tries to warp our perspective of sexuality. He tries to warp our perspective of wholeness. He tries to warp our perspective of identity. And so when you hear stories of, of victory from other men that have, that have battled and had victory in overcoming, that's the, that's the battle worth fighting. And so I feel my life purpose from this point forward is to fight and rescue for the hearts of men. I don't know what that will look like, but God has my full yes. Vocationally, I've let my business kind of subside because I feel the calling of the hour right now is to take back territory that the enemy has taken. So I'm doubling down on the kingdom. Everything I have, everything I own is directed towards going into prisons, going into men's recovery homes. Wherever there's a platform of men that want freedom, that's my yes. And I will go to the ends of the earth to share that. You know, I've been graced with, with amazing men in my life that have poured into me. Ron Dunn's, Jim Bowes, Dean Diaz's, guys that have, have saw in me the ability to speak to the hearts of men. And so I have a, a tribe of, Joel's, I have a tribe of guys because one thing I've learned is you can't do it alone. So if I had three points, it's number one, you have to be willing to be honest with yourself, be vulnerable. Number two, you can't do it alone. And number three, we need a reprogram of our identity. And so, you know, I don't want to take up too much time. We're good. So one of the things I started to do when I started interviewing guys was I, I made a dog tag with scriptures on it. And the reason I chose a dog tag was what does a dog tag represent? Your enlistment, who you are. There you go, jackpot, who you are. And so for 38 years, I, I walked from a false identity. But men, we are beloved sons. We are warriors and the time is now, Joel said it 20 minutes ago, the time is now to take back the territory the enemy has, has lied to us. We've been lied to. And I'm here to tell you, you are worth it. And whatever wound or trauma that you experienced in childhood, that was an attack from the enemy to, to, to basically handcuff you into bondage. And there are men here that walk in freedom. And I think there's men that, that chains need to be broken. Anytime I go into a room, I can sense where, where freedom is and where there's still an apprehension. Because when you can worship and praise and complete freedom and not care what anybody thinks about you, that's authentic freedom. And I didn't always operate like that. When I, when I would be held uh, hostage by pornography addiction or infidelity, it, it zaps our strength. And so the enemy typically goes after men through sexual sin. And so Samson, when he repented, he got his strength back. And so my implorement to you men is let's get our strength back. It's time to take back territory. It's time to expand. It's time to then go back into the world and find other men that are held bondage. And so I'm gonna give each one of you guys online as well, if you want dog tags, I'm gonna leave Joel a bag. And so I've probably given away 2,000 dog tags. I order them in increments of 100 to 400. And so I'm gonna leave a bag. This one has Deuteronomy 322, for the Lord will fight for you. The bat, you know, and, and I've used Joshua 1.9, I've used Ephesians 2.10, that we're God's workmanship, be strong and courageous. So the next one we'll do is Joshua 1.9 again. But 
I want, if you have a guy that is in your life that needs a story of restoration, a story of rescue, give him a dog tag. I have plenty and I'll order, I'll order as many as, as we need to because that is the call of the hour is to go back and capture the hearts of other men that are held behind enemy lines. And you guys are warriors. What's happening here, there's empty, this place could be filled every Wednesday. And I pray that it is. I pray that I'd be welcomed back as a guest to bring men. This is an amazing platform and what you guys are doing. And so again, I'm honored. Um, if you would like to share your testimony, you can reach out to me at battleworthfighting.org, um, preferably in person. I do a sit down interview. It's very informal. We do it out in nature. Um, I'm a you know, very amateur videographer. I've been blessed with an amazing professional guy, Dean Diaz. Uh, at Details Matter. He's a, a dear friend at 20 plus year. He's now come aboard as my partner. And so he is my, we are 50% partners in this ministry. And, and, and I believe God is going to really open up tremendous doors for speaking engagements, for uh, men's conferences, and for guys just to be able to have some encouragement throughout the week.